Nest Repair, copyright 1992 by Irate Systems. Let's pop it in and have a look at this beauty. My name is Gordon Jennings, and I will be your guide throughout this video. NES Repair Secrets by Irate Systems, Mesa, Arizona. Through the course of this video, we will instruct you how to repair, how to troubleshoot, how to recognize symptoms for the NES system. The controller, the control deck, the main board, and some other commonly occurring problems on selling these videos. So what I ask from you is that you obey my copyright on this video and don't make any copies. If your friends or acquaintances would like a copy of the video, please refer them to Irata Systems, Mesa, Arizona. NES system reached a popularity in America that no other video game system has reached to this day. I began repairing video games clear back in the early 80s with the Atari. I'm sorry, in the, in the later 70s and the early 80s with the Atari. Even Atari did not reach the popularity that the Nintendo Entertainment System has reached. There are probably four or five million of these in existence in the United States. <clears throat> Eventually, every single one of them will break. And I am here to show you how to repair those. I will take you step by step through the system, beginning with them. One thing I'd like you to notice, this is not a fancy video. It doesn't have a lot of graphics. I don't have a lot of subtitles, I don't have fade-ins, I don't have fade-outs. I'm doing this in my workbench here. It's very simple and straightforward. The purpose of this video is not to wow you with great graphics and great subtitles and fade-ins and great special effects. That's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to instruct you on how to repair this. So that's my main purpose and we will do that through the course of this video. With the NES controller, controller, part number 004 is pretty straightforward in repair. You'll note again that there are eight functions, up, down, left, right, select, start, A and B. There are two cartridges that are good for testing the controller. The Legend of Zelda, good one, is Breakthrough. Breakthrough, you're able to test most of the functions except select, and you're able to do that on startup. So let's put it in and find out. If we insert our cartridge and turn it on, you'll notice that we can now test the select button at the beginning of Breakthrough. If the select works, you can go ahead and, and select one or two players, either one, it doesn't matter, and hit start. Now we've tested these two functions. They test fine. Now we can test up, down, fire, A, and B. A makes it jump. B makes it fire. Left, right makes it accelerate, and left makes it slow down. So now we've been able to test all the functions in, in this uh, controller, and they test out fine. The first thing to check for, if and when the controller doesn't work, is the cord. And look for physical damage. I, I look at the controller, turn it over, roll it around, look for any kind of physical damage that may have occurred to it, such as being dropped. I've seen some that have been chewed on by animals. I've seen others that have been literally run over by cars that have been broken half. So check the controller for any damage. Next thing you want to do is check the cord for any punctures or tears in the cord, which is the most common problem. So what I usually do, turn the game off, pull the cord out, and I simply run my fingers along the outside of the cord, and if there's any kind of bump or cut, you'll be able to, to feel it. So I run my finger all the way along the cord and 
see if I can feel any, any cut. There is a cut. The cord is usually bad. Now, what you, there's two things you can do on that. You'll notice that this controller cord is actually shorter than the normal one. When I got this controller in, it had been bit or cut approximately six inches from the top of the, of the cable. I was able to cut it off and shorten it and therefore, thereby retaining the usage of the, of the controller. However, it's just a little shorter cord now, which is usually not a problem for most people. If the problem occurs or the bite occurs down in this end, it's usually um, a little more difficult to repair. And I will show you how to repair one of those. <clears throat> the first thing you want to do is clear out an area where you can work and get get the, if if the controller is bad and you find that the cord is in tip top shape again like I said the first thing you want to do is clear out an area so I will remove the control deck from the surface of our workbench and usually what I like to do is lay some kind of soft cloth down so that this doesn't get scratched. Now let me make a, <clears throat> let me um, back up here and make one note. One note, please be aware of static electricity. I've chosen a workbench that is made out of wood and I'm working on a cement floor where very little, there's very little chance of static buildup. If you are in an area that is susceptible to static electricity, please get a static bracelet and ground yourself before working on any of these. Most of the, <clears throat> some of the chips that you'll be working on in the Nintendo are CMOS chips and are very sensitive to static. So be very careful with that and be uh, aware of it. So the first thing I like to do is I usually like to cover the bench with something soft that won't scratch the controller should there be any kind of particles on there. The next thing you'll need is a small tip Phillips screwdriver. And I want you to, to take out all six screws. Loosen all six screws. Don't, don't pull them out yet. Loosen the six screws of the controller. Notice the cord comes in, it wraps around these these two. I'm going to pause the camera here and zoom in so you can see a little better a close-up of this. Okay, you will note that the cord comes in, it wraps around these two strain relief pins, and these are corrugated, have the edges on to grip it so that this cord can't slide out, and it allows you to give a little pull or a little tension on this cord without pulling it out. So when you replace it, make sure that it wraps around and follows the diagram into the center here, through the center, and in where it's attached. Now notice the controller has one controlling chip in it, and that is a CD4021, which is a CMOS um, chip. And I want you to understand the purpose of this chip. What this chip does is a serial parallel chip. And when the controller dies, 99% of the time it's that chip. So all you have to do is remove the chip, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, and replace it with a, uh, with a new chip. And usually the controller will work. But you need to ohm out the cord first of all to make sure